all of those risk assessments feed down into a kind of a cumulative um, impact distribution here. Uh, where you can see them in the mean max. So if you've got multiple cost impacts or multiple time impacts switch between those, you can see how that's coming through. Uh, and therefore, this is what would be exported into Safran Risk if you were then doing some cost modeling or some uh, schedule modeling later. Right, right. Uh, there's a lot more still to do with the improvements to that interface, but it does exist. Um, so if you want to see it, then uh, maybe schedule a demonstration with us and we can take you through what that looks like yeah. at the moment. Uh, and then at the bottom, history. What are all the changes? Who made what change when? Audit trails. People love to see all that stuff in risk databases. OK, so that is uh, the detail on a risk. A slightly different view would be to click this button here where it says new risk. So if I was to create a new risk for the first time, um, I get this clean form where I can either borrow from an existing risk that's been written in the global risk register mm -hmm. uh, and bring that down. It just repopulated risk and then I just use the sliders as applicable. So the sliders, how do I assess this COVID risk? It's happened in the past. What does it look like on this project? Might be very different to other projects. Some projects are more exposed to some things than others, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the global risk approach. Otherwise, you draft, you know, write out the description notes. What's the source? What's the likelihood of that source occurring? Then you hit the plus button. So it's possible to add multiple sources and start building that bow tie just in a really basic sh shape. So you've got a kind of basic structure, like the bare bones of the bow tie. Or you don't have to do a bow tie, just a single source and a single impact is the bare minimum. Right. So if, if, that, if that's if it's a, a low level risk, but you want to capture it mm -hmm. just very quickly, you, you've got the freedom to do that. What yeah. I also liked was Mark Turner used to do this quite a lot. So I'm going to attempt it is if you just shrink down that um, screen there like that. If you can imagine mm -hmm. that was a mobile phone. So if uh -huh. you're on your on your browser. If you're on your browser, um, you could this would be how it would look on your phone. Yeah. So if you're out on site, you see something, it triggers a thought, you want to capture it. Yeah. Get yeah. back to the office and then flesh it out later. This right. is an easy way of capturing that. I quite Very like cool. That. Yeah, so good, yeah. that's risk capture, risk assessment. Uh, we've already seen the uh, the product is that the dashboard is the main one, but the other sort of secondary main one, if you will, is the contingency. So you can set up uh, contingencies, multiple if you want, or just have one. And then there's an audit trail around the release of contingency. So you can manage that and show that uh, happening um, as your project matures. And then this is supposed to be like a Manhattan diagram. Uh, I've probably not set this up very well just yet, but different phases of the project attract different risk exposures is what this is supposed to be showing. Uh, so the, the blue represents the face. So you, you can see the some lower blue, but mm -hmm, the, the mm -hmm. height of the bars are lower here. Um, but total exposure over a very long duration project, very, very high. So adding all those bars together gives you the total exposure, I suppose. Um, and then you can see the mitigation again uh, and what the probability of or suitability of that is. So against our uh, pre mitigated risk exposure, that blue bar or column, whatever you want to call that line, uh, that is, it doesn't even touch the pre-mitigated probability. So clearly it's only suitable when used in the context of the uh, the post-mitigated position. So that's implying right. that you guys out there, all 300 of you that are on my project, you are all going to be doing your mitigations, right? Because actually, as it stands, this is not looking great. Right. Um, yeah. I'm getting like P5. Like I have 5% confidence that this contingency is sufficient to get us to the end of the project. I'm ringing my alarm bell when I see that. I'm <laughs> calling an, an emergency conversation because these guys in the senior management team have somehow got us into this situation. We've not spotted it before, but I'm telling you I'm seeing it right now and I don't like this. Yeah. 
yeah i'm worried i'm very worried if that blue bar was all the way up here uh, say and it was there i'd have p85 confidence that assuming yeah. we complete yeah. the mitigation measures it's going to be all right if i bring back in my um my pre-mitigated view like that p85 here is actually only about p10 pre-mitigated so again urgency around the actions completing them because mm. if we don't then we have to assume we're in the red picture and not the green picture and the red picture is so much worse <laughs> yeah yeah so that's mm. in the aggregate that's the aggregate of all the risks on this particular project's risk register um i i think there might be other reports and things that you can do the aggregated view of this on the portfolio um certainly in the portfolio view you would go to select a, a bunch of projects like we could select all of the projects i mean it'd be a bit of a mess if we do that but we could load everything you know this is demo data in different states of um <laughs> readiness for, for use right. but yeah. once they're loaded in here we can now say right give me some reports on all of those projects give me a basic projects overview so what's the award stage and the who's the project manager of the value so i've got completion percent as well what's my current contingency and things so i'm getting some basic data fine that's okay to see what's the contingency mm -hmm. movement well it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag um you know we've got some projects with contingency some don't have them you know some some projects you might want to put under a filter and say well don't show me the projects that aren't active just show me the projects that are active because of course they don't have a contingency because we haven't gotten into contract yet with some of these projects so you know you, you can look at everything in the aggregate but you're still going to want to apply some degree of filtering on these things so what i'm showing you now is the last thing that we're going to talk about and that is the portfolio view so this is actually another role type so i mentioned uh, tracy i think her name was is that we've got a user that can log in here and she's a graduate she's in head office so she can see some of this aggregated stuff but she's got no sense of who is managing individual risks who is culpable who or what is it what is the risk about she doesn't have that level of detail she doesn't have security clearance to see it She's not assigned mm -hmm. to those projects, but she is allowed to just aggregate and pull together the overall risk exposure of the projects in a particular portfolio or the entire organization, the entire ERM. Uh, she could do that. Um, and she could also look at, you know, the process health. Like, oh, yeah. how's it all going? All right, how's data, how's data center in Seattle comparing to that in Finland, comparing to my um, bulk import test, wherever that one is? um so yeah we've got a whole bunch of projects that don't have any uh data to talk about there's my bulk import test over there oh gosh i got six actions not started in time okay it's a fictional project but you know you can see how this communicates hopefully at a glance or just in the detail mm. uh, and and doing the filtering again um so yeah there's there's some aggregation tools is the kind of take home message here uh, for contingency for all these other things so, so